demonic gargoyle for all specs. Ooh! Cycle. There it is! There it is! AMZ! Oh my god! Whew. Guaranteed raid spot. We did it, baby. Let's go. Hello everyone, Hyper here, and today's video will be a breakdown of the deep dive panel that we just had for World of Warcraft, where they talk about the new systems, the class changes, uh, the leveling revamp, and, you know, some, some of the new stuff they're introducing next expansion. So yesterday there was a few things that I didn't even mention in the video, because they just kind of like had it up as a bullet point, said it, and then never talked about it again, like the Soulbind system. Uh, but today we got to find out a little more about that as well. So I just wanted to share my thoughts about some of these changes and what the potential benefits and maybe downsides are to it. So the first section here will be the class changes because ultimately that is what is most important to me. And since we're not getting a new class in the new expansion, um, I really think they're trying to fix the ones that they already have in the game. So one of the big selling points here was that they want to move away from spec identity back to class identity. So you're not a fire mage, you're a mage. Um, and they are doing this by returning shared abilities throughout all the specs. Um, so for example, mages will have access to, if you're, even if you're a fire mage, you will have access to frost and arcane spells. Um, or if you're a paladin, you know, you will have access to a large number of spells that are shared throughout the specs. But then the spec will just focus on empowering a specific subcategory of those spells like if you're a red paladin you're all about uh, improving all your damage dealing abilities you know if you're a prop paladin then you're just trying to improve all your defensive abilities and so on so as far as abilities that are returning to the game it's it's the great on pruning um for paladins they're bringing back all of the auras so div aura red aura concentration aura and the movement speed one um for shamans you're bringing back totems so instead of just dropping down a totem once in a while you're going to have those you know constant four totems around you i assume is is how they're envisioning it for rogues they're bringing back poisons for all of the specs uh so instant poison deadly poison crippling poison and mind numbing po poison is what they had as examples i don't know if they're bringing back leeching poison or anything like that um, and then for Warlocks, the example they used is Curses. So all four Curses will be returning. Now, along these lines, I really thought that Death Knight Presences are returning. Uh, because Auras for Red Paladins are very similar to Presences on Death Knights. But it was not on this list, there's still hope for that. Um, you know, if you're someone who played back whenever Presences were a thing, we used to have Blood, Unholy, and Frost Presence, um, and each kind of functioned a little bit differently to kind of give you a little bit of, of advantage in whatever situation you're using it in. So those were core mechanics that they're returning. Um, but they're also looking at returning basically iconic class abilities from previous expansions. So Raise Dead was on this slide um so raise dead summon your pet this will be available to frost dk's and blood dk's instead of just unholy dk's so this also opens up the potential to rework death pact so currently death pact is just a defensive cooldown it heals you but then it applies an absorb previously the way death pact used to work is that you would sacrifice your pet to get that uh, health so i wonder if they're also looking at reworking how some of these abilities interact uh, they're also returning Frost Shock, Consecration, Earl Saul's vert Vortex to all Druid specs, I assume. Uh, Shiv, that was a great utility ability that the rogues lost. Um, and Death Coil. So again, with Death Coil, you used to be able to heal your pet. Or if you went into Lichborn, then you were able to heal yourself with Death Coil. So again, I'm interested to see if they're looking at reworking these abilities as well. Or they're just wanting to making them... Um, available for all of the all of the specs because having death coil as a blood decay would be pretty cool uh, as long as it does you know significantly more damage than death strike 
you'd basically have the choice between, okay, do I need to be dumping my runic power to deal damage, or do I need to be dumping my runic power to heal myself? Um, and having that choice is always great. They're also looking at returning some of the talents as just baseline abilities. And this is really where the exciting stuff is happening for DKs. Um, we are getting Summon Gargoyle as baseline, I assume. And we're getting AMZ back for PvE. Now, AMZ, I talked about this several times in the past on stream, um, on podcasts. AMZ is such an insane ability if executed properly that it would guarantee DKs a raid spot for several of the bosses. Uh, so AMZ is one of those abilities that, you know, if, if you just use it in a pug, it's probably not going to get much use out of it. But in a very well-coordinated group, it's very similar to Battle Shout. Instead, but Battle Shout is more versatile. It will help you a little bit against all types of damage, where AMZ is very specific. Uh, think of like Sakul stacking up for the Dreads. You drop your AMZ, your raid takes barely any damage from the Dreads. Um, so AMZ is a great ability. I'm super, super excited to see it come back to the game. And we're also getting back Cyclone, Hammer of Wrath for Paladin. So that was their execute ability, if I remember correctly. Uh, Hunter's Mark for Hunters and Demonic Circle for Warlocks. And of course, this is just like a small list to give you a taste of what's returning to the game. It's not the entire uh, thing. We'll probably see more of that whenever the alpha comes out. So after Talents, what they covered are is a slide they called Long Lost Friends. And these are very, very niche abilities, um, I believe, that are making a return. Shattering Throw for Warriors. Um, in PvP, this was super useful because you were able to shattering throw bubbles and I think ice blocks. I don't remember if it worked on ice blocks, but it was essentially a dispel against a very niche uh, enemy defensive cooldown. Kill shot for hunters, ritual of doom for warlocks, challenging shout, and eyes of the beast. Now, most of these abilities, um, except for kill shot maybe, are not used very often, but They've been a core part of the game for a long time, and they got removed whenever the pruning happened. Um, and I'm super excited to see that they're actually making a return to the class identity and bringing back abilities that are not necessarily useful in your everyday rotation and against every enemy, but they have those individual uses that make them exceptionally cool. So along these same lines, I kind of wanted to talk about the talent system a little bit. With a lot of these abilities being returned to our core kit, I believe that it's a great time to take a look at the talent system. And we already know that we're not getting a full talent revamp uh, like a lot of us hoped. But at least take a look at the individual talents. And with the new expansion, it's always a great time to take a look at what didn't work in the previous expansion and how it can be changed. So Death Knight, as an example, especially on Holy, has had a few talents that were just untouched the entire ex expansion and unused the entire expansion. Um, and having those either replaced or, you know, iterated upon is, I believe, a super important thing that they need to be looking at, especially if they're not introducing a new class, revamping and reworking and, you know, making the classes that we do have feel super good to play. Um, I think needs to be a big selling point in the next expansion if they want it to succeed. So next, uh, let's talk about the Covenant system a little bit. We got a little bit more information on how this is going to work. So like I said yesterday, we are going to have two Covenant abilities, uh, one that's going to be a general one and one that's a class-specific one that should feel a lot like your on-use artifact power from Legion according to how they're planning this. So for the general covenant ability that everyone will get access to, it seems like it's a utility ability. And all of these that they showed in the slides are some sort of movement speed abilities or uh, mobility abilities rather. Um, for example, Unburden is just a super short sprint. It's four seconds, 300% movement speed. There's a few other ones that um, are a little bit longer, like the one that turns you into a fox and you can run around and you have lowered aggro radius, or, the, or there's one that's simply a teleport. And then the fourth one is like you yoink your spirit out of your body and you can move around while your body stays behind. And then you end up teleporting to wherever your spirit is. 
So it can be used for like skips, for example, um, or preventing fall damage. And then you will get a second ability that's class specific. And we've had a look to all of them for the Kyrian Covenant. The DK one was you deal some damage to your enemy, but then every rune you spend reduces the cooldown of that ability by four seconds. So whenever you are spending two runes, you would actually get eight seconds. So it's kind of boring for DK in particular, but we are yet to see the other three Covenant abilities. So these are going to be essentially small cooldowns. Uh, some of them are 30 seconds. Most of them, from what I've seen, are a minute long cooldowns. And it's defined by whatever Covenant you choose. So as far as re-rolling these, they said that you can re-roll what Covenant abilities you have by choosing a different Covenant, but it would take some time. They didn't go any more in depth than this. So we know that it's possible to change your covenant, but we don't know how much work it takes. Um, it's definitely not something that they want you to be able to do like, you know, mid raid, for example, or like between going from a raid to mythic plus or whatever. Uh, it's definitely something that you have to kind of plan ahead and be like, okay, for the next boss that we're progressing in two days, I need to be this specific covenant and I need to put some work into change. And they also didn't say that if this is a one-time thing where it changing for the first time will take a lot of work because you kind of need to catch up on the story um, or changing every single time will take a lot of work. The next subcategory of covenants is the soulbind mechanic, which they had on a slide yesterday, but didn't say anything else about it. Uh, in an interview, we got some examples of how this is going to work, but today they finally kind of showed us exactly how they want this system to work. So the Soulbind mechanic is essentially whenever you choose a Covenant, there's going to be a few NPCs within that Covenant that you can bind your soul to. And binding your soul to a specific NPC will give you an empowerment and will unlock that NPC's talent tree. So by the way they showed it, there's going to be like, you know, 10 to 15 talents. And within these, you can choose different empowerments that you can have. Um, and it's, it's very similar to like an artifact weapon type thing, but you need to make choices rather than being able to unlock all of these abilities. Um, so they haven't talked about really how you level these up. Uh, I assume it's going to be through questing or, you know, some sort of uh, grind type system where you need to do dailies for them, but you basically are able to progress down this talent tree and get better and better, uh, soul bind perks that will be available basically in all the all the systems that you're able to play so raiding pv pvp mythic plus so this is something that is just going to be a character empowerment they also said that these soulbind dudes are not going to be um like bodyguards that are just following you around they're just sitting in their camp doing whatever and they also said that you're going to be able to switch your soulbind person uh, or your soulbind spells with by simply popping a tome or something along those lines. So it's meant to be something that you can choose to change going from uh, boss to boss or mythic plus to mythic plus, similar to talent systems. Um, and then the last thing within covenants is obviously the cosmetic rewards. Getting cloaks looks super cool. Um, we're getting, depending on the cosmetic um, or the ability you have, you might get some customization of the Covenant ability. Uh, like the one that turns you into a fox, there's like several forms that you can turn into and even some hidden ones. Uh, we're getting full armor sets based on your Covenant. I don't know how hard these are going to be able to, or how hard these are going to be to obtain. Uh, I assume it's just going to be like Reach Exalted or whatever, um, and you get it. And we're also getting a mount that's based on your covenant that you're able to upgrade, uh, similar to the mount that we had in Mechagon. They kind of just start with like the base model and you're able to like build on top of it. So those are pretty cool. Um, excited about that. So the next major thing that really piqued my interest is obviously legendaries and this whole Torghast dungeon thing that we're getting next expansion. So this is in the Maw, which is like the end game zone. Um, and within it, you have this tower, and this tower is going to be basically like a little challenge that you can do. They didn't say if there's like a cooldown on it, whether it's daily, weekly, um, or it's just you just do it as many times as you want. But it's meant to be a scenario that, for me, 
it really seems like the Suramar scenario that we used to have in Legion, but revamped and added with a bunch of interesting changes. And within this Torghast tower, you also have the legendary system, and this is where you will be crafting your legendaries. So it's a very central part of the game. Basically, the higher up you go in the tower, the more difficult it's going to get. So on your first try, you might get, you know, like five minutes into it or whatever, and then just be overpowered. Whereas once you collected enough anime power and you're able to have all these spell perks and all these uh, modifiers on you, you're able to climb further and further into the tower. And the higher you go, the better benefits you get, the better rewards you get, and the more uh, materials you can be collecting to craft your legendaries. So for the legendaries, you are going to be able to choose the slot that it goes in, the stats that it has, and the perk that it has. They haven't mentioned anything about, you know, restricted slots, like, are we going to get weapons? Are we going to get legendary trinkets? Um, so far, it's a, they just made very general statements. We didn't see anything specific. What we do know is that this Torghast tower is at the core of the legendary system. You need to be doing this tower to get all the necessary materials to craft legendaries. Now, lastly, I wanted to touch on leveling a little bit because they're reworking how leveling works. Um, you all probably know that we're getting scaled down from level 120 to level 50 and then level 60 is the new cap. So basically, the way it's going to work is that they added a new starter zone where you level from 1 to 10. Or if you are someone who already has a max level character, you can still pick the individual starting zones that have been in the game. But these scale from level 1 to level 10. Then at level 10, you go to your main city, and here you meet up with Chromie, and you're able to choose a specific expansion that you're able to level in. Um, so if you want to level in Wrath of the Lich King, you can. You just you know talk to Chromie and have her send you there. And level 10 to level 50, you will just level through an entire expansion story. They also said that this is optional, so you can still just go around leveling however else you want. But essentially, one, uh, 10 to 50 is going to be just getting you caught up. And within this, they're also increasing how fast you're leveling. They said that level 1 to level 50, which is the equivalent of now level 1 to level 120, should take about 60 to 70% less time in this new system. So they're really speeding up on how you level and how long it takes. And then once you reach level 50, you're going to be going um, into the new expansion, into the Shadowlands leveling experience. And more on that, uh, if you want, they, they had the first panel where they explained how that works. Your first time through Shadowlands is going to be linear because they want to tell the story. But then once you're leveling alts, you're able to choose a covenant right away. And you're also able to level in whichever zone you want. So that's pretty much all the major systems. Uh, a lot of the changes are super exciting and I'm very much looking forward to whenever this alpha is going to be coming out in the future and see how they're reworking all these classes because obviously this is just a glimpse of what they're planning on doing. Thanks a lot for watching this video and let me know in the comment section below what you think of these changes and what is it that you're looking forward to most. Again, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.